Okay, this is AP Physics. We're talking classic equations of motion. So I can write the old functions. I can write the old equations, those equations 1, 2, and 3. We're just going to talk 1 and 2 at first. Okay, so equation number 1, as a function of time, x equals x0 plus v0t. Is, oh, sorry, that's equation 2. This is the order. This is the order they appear on the AP Physics equation sheet. That's why I number them that, that way. The first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one is f equals ma, etc. Maybe they need better nicknames. Okay. So there's number two. I was going to do something to x, some relationship, to get the velocity. So this is position as a function of time, is x of t. It's a function. Those other, those other things, acceleration, in honors it had to be constant. In AP it does not, uh, <coughs> which is why we need the tricks we're about to learn. <coughs> but we've just got t as our variable, our input, you could say. And all the rest are just numbers, labels. If I was going to take x of t and get, if I would take position function and get velocity function, how could I do that? Don't remember at all? There were several tw tricks. Sure. Divide by the time? Okay, one valid trick was to take, shh, you're ruining my punchline. One was to take the change in position over change in time. However, that's only true if we have constant acceleration because that's actually the, that would be the average velocity. Okay. If I wanted the instantaneous velocity, if I had some, I could give a crazy, like, I had to stick to straight lines on these graphs because acceleration had to be constant because it was on its physics. If I wanted the instantaneous velocity from the position, let's say instant, I mentioned it already. There's not a shortcut from the equation. Well, what would I do? I could show you. Shannon? Derive it. I'm deriving it right now. If I had a graph of position, maybe we need to review this. From a graph of position, one part of that graph would be the velocity. Oh, yeah, the slope. If I can just read the slope of position, if I have this position function, oh, look, it's quadratic, it's parabolic. That's no problem for you calculus students. I don't have to beat around the bush now. If I want the, the velocity at any point from a position graph, I just find the slope. And what's the real big brain definition of a slope? The slope of that function, x of t, is really its more a physics term than a math, Andre. It's rate of change. Awesome. OK, I think we are ready, unless Andre completely blew your mind. If I want to get from the position function to the instantaneous velocity function, I just need its rate of change. And a story, if I can find that out with algebra, write this down, Peter. Or if I can find it out reading slopes from a graph, it's a good deal. Okay? And I can go from velocity to acceleration, we'll say a bar.
the same using the same rate of change trick. The acceleration is just the rate of change in velocity. Velocity is the rate of change in position. Okay. And we had some tricks to walk up and down that ladder using graphs mostly in honors physics. Okay. Everybody's with me? Okay. There's a much easier trick. Now, do they say taking the derivative in calculus class, BC students who have seen this before, or do they say finding the derivative? What word do they use? I would say taking. Doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Um, <coughs> We're going to do a specific case, because it's the one we've been working with. OK. We have a monomial function, just generic. We'll make it a function of time, because that's what we're doing. OK. It has a constant term out front we'll call capital N. Oh, no, A for any, let's do, or we do want to do capital C. Eh, I actually like capital A times T to the N power, okay? Um, and, and the exponent could actually be any number, capital A for any constant. That's why I chose that letter. And N, I like integer exponents. n for any integer. Uh, that will serve us well in physics, even all through AP physics. Assume the exponents are integers. They don't have to be. But I think in my life, I never ran into partial or fraction or complex exponents until college. So, And I've never seen them on the AP physics test. So, OK. So, the hardest part of take the derivative or find the derivative is the ridiculous symbols. If you write lowercase d over dt, which d for derivative with respect to t, and that like multiplication or raised to a power or something. So, okay. I'm going to write this one time. I'm going to get in trouble with Mr. Pritchett or Mrs. Blaisdell. Who's your calc teacher this year? So, Blaisdell? Some have each. I'm going to get in trouble. Take the derivative with respect to time to the first power. Could I take a derivative with respect to time to the second power? or to the zero power, or to an entire function, you bet I could. I could. I don't know if, because we have to do that in real quantum mechanics, but I don't know if other math teachers have even seen that. I actually, Mr. Pritchett has for sure. But don't, don't nitpick your calculus teacher about, are we taking derivative with respect to a variable with some weird power? No, I don't, I don't think you ever can, even in AP Calc, because uh, it's an awful mess. Okay, this is like multiplication. So I don't. I could put parentheses there. I could put multiplication because it follows in order of operations. It takes the same place as multiplication. But then I just write like this is acting on the function f of t. Okay, and then I'll have the result. Maybe I should. You can take derivatives of a bunch of stuff. Like I could have. Oh, I just overwritten my one. Perfect. It's just a 1. Pretend there's no 1. There. It acts on everything. I could have f plus g. I could have a bunch of other functions, and it would distribute like it's multiplication. Okay? So write yourself a little note, whatever you need to think of. This d over dt I, is like multiplying by something, and it distributes or acts or operates just like multiplication. Okay. Have I lost anyone yet? I'm just introducing new symbols. 
Okay. Now what do you do? Derivative of monomial. Okay. So this is just telling your calculus or physics teacher that you're taking the derivative of f of t, and the, pr the brackets are optional. Okay. So then you write, here's your old function. This is what derivative does on a monomial. You subtract 1 from the exponent. Oh, and I... Let's see if I can... Rats. <laughs> I need to write something out front. Forgot to leave myself space. Happens to everyone. You have a nice big sheet of paper, right, where you're writing this. Okay. There's the old function. Any constant number out front times time is our variable that we're working with, because it's physics. That's why I have time. And then we have an integer exponent. We subtract 1 from the exponent, okay? And then we multiply by the new, is that right? No, we multiply out front by the old exponent. I was thinking too many steps ahead. So we make a new exponent, and we multiply the front of the equation out front, this constant A, capital A. We multiply it by the old exponent. And that's it. We found the derivative. What? Say, Whitcomb, this is madness. Okay. Are you sure? I'll try to... Yeah, I better extend page. Do you have... Everybody has that up at the top? I really want to just scroll down smoothly. Perfect lineup. Awesome. Let's say we have our x of t that I just wrote on the previous slide. It's x0, leave some space, plus v0 times t, plus leave some space, one half a t squared. I'm going to take the derivative of it. And I can just cozy it right up there. dx dt. We're almost always going to differentiate just to that one variable. Okay. I'll let you get used to it before we do other stuff. Oh. x0, this starting position, does that have a power of time? Should you have taken something else besides AP Physics? Because it does. What power does it have? Oh. Let's write in our imaginary stuff in green. That's times t to the 0 power. And if you forgot that this is t to the 1 power, remember right now, it's important. But that actually helps us out a lot. Because guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply out front by the old exponent, so any constant has by definition the zero power of the variable, because it's constant. So if I have to differentiate or take the derivative of a constant term, it's always zero. You multiply by zero. Doesn't matter what other, it doesn't matter if it's a complex number, irrational, whatever, any constant number has a derivative of zero, because it cannot change. Okay. Hey, look at this. I have a one. So now I have to compute something. But I have one times, oh, make more space getting new habits on the electronic board. 1, the old exponent, times v0, times t to the 0 power. What's t to the 0 power? Also 1. 1. So I have dx dt. I should maybe, if you want to be a lazy physicist, that's allowed. You can stop referring to this x as a function of time, because it obviously is, but equals v0. Okay. What else have I got? I'm going to take, so I did that one, check, plus, here's my old exponent. It's a 2. 2 times 1 half a t. Now I reduce my 1 exponent to 0. I reduce my 2 exponent to 1. And I multiplied by the old one out front. 
2 times 1 half is also 1. Oh, look. Plus AT. It worked. That just equals V. Can I keep scrolling down? Because you've been writing. What if I take... So that's velocity as a function of time. Let's take a derivative again. Derivative of velocity with respect to time to the first power. I'll stop saying that after today. It's just a habit. Oh look, a constant with a zero. So that's just zero. Okay, plus a times t to the one multiplied by one. t becomes zero power constant. It's just a equals a by itself. No, I'm not making this up. With monomials or polynomials, since it distributes like a multiplication, that always works. Subtract one from the exponent. This is why everyone thought Isaac Newton was a genius. He figured that out. Subtract one from the exponent, multiply by the old exponent, you have the rate of change of a monomial or polynomial. You're going to spend a lot of time in calculus class <coughs> figuring out, okay, if you don't have a monomial or polynomial, how can you get the rate of change of it? It's complicated. I think I better hit you with that tomorrow, the brute force way to do it. You'll be really glad. Okay. Let me break apart my video because I'm up 15 minutes. Uh, ooh, any questions? usually have great ideas. I'd like to record them. No? Okay. Well, we have too much time for it to be all homework time. F today our challenge is... Oh! The challenge for me is to use the technology correctly. Holy smokes. Every day a challenge. Um, uh, no! I'm still recording this. Awesome. Anyway, uh, we're going to reverse that procedure. What do you get if you reverse that procedure? So doing this to position found the velocity, which was not you three that have been answering. How about Jeffrey? From position to velocity, what did I have to find? If I do this procedure or our honors procedure from position, velocity is what feature of that position function? It's the slope or the rate of change. Excellent. I found the rate of change. If I do this procedure to the velocity function, I found the rate of change. It's the acceleration. Okay, I better write that. Let me write it in red. Come on. Oh, it's working. It's the rate of change. Okay, so if we're going to reverse it, we would find that's finding the area under the curve, under the graph. Now I can say curve because we're in calculus.